like to welcome everyone to the annual general meeting. In particular, note the presence of Deputy Lieutenant Jenny Nguyen, Lev Colonel Nick Jenkins, Freeman of the Borough, Dr. Josh Dixie, High Sheriff of Shropshire, and Civic Heads, and ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to have a moment's silence in memory of Lady Elizabeth Holt, former Deputy Lieutenant of Shropshire, and Freeman of the Borough. Members, I am saddened to learn the news that Elizabeth Holt Freeman Burrow passed away peacefully earlier this week. Liz, who was passionate about the local community, was awarded honorary Freeman of the Borough, the highest award the council can bestow in 2008 for her contributions to the development of Telford and her outstanding record of public service. Liz also served as the county ambassador as a deputy lieutenant of Shropshire from 1995 until 2009. Our thoughts are with their family and friends at this sad time. We can have a moment in silence in memory of Liz. I'd like to introduce Councillor John Thomas and who will read out the declaration on behalf of members. Can all members stand please? God, the peace and the love, we offer you now this little space we've made in the frantic scramble of life. Meet with us so that we may know that inner tranquility and resolve that we may use all of our time more effectively in the service of your kingdom and your people. Lord God, such a special occasion as this tonight demands that we pray together as a wide and diverse community. And tonight we give you thanks for all of those elected by this community to serve this community in local government. We trust your call on their lives and that you will give them freedom to work within that calling, granting them the energy and stamina to do so in all their elected office demands. We pray that you help all our councillors in the borough of Telford and Rekin, whatever their ideology and political standing, to be gracious and kind to each other in the years that lie ahead. We pray that wisdom and integrity might be the hallmark in political debate and that this will lead to agreement and wise explanation in the public square. 
We pray especially for the mayor and mayoress in their term of office and for their deputies and their families. As ambassadors for our town, they bear great responsibility and will give sacrificially of their time and energies and need the support of all of us. And we give thanks for the past year of office of Councillor Raj Mehta and his mayoress Poona. We thank you for his relentless energy and his commitment to building bridges across our community and for the unity of community spirit, which is the desire of his heart. And as we look to the future, we pray for all of our councillors, all who work within the council, as the demands of their roles become more apparent. We pray in particular for those who have been elected here for, this fir for the first time, that they might not be overcome or overwhelmed by all that is asked of them. And we pray that as these public servants flourish and grow, that they will all be able to make a positive contribution to the well-being of this borough as they serve our communities with grace, with love and diligence. And so we seek your kingdom throughout every sphere. Every sphere. We long for heaven's demonstration here, the light of heaven to shine brightly for all to see, transform, revive and heal our society. Peace, truth and justice reigning everywhere. Be present in our public square. Lord God, each one is called in turn to make a difference, to bring joy, hope and promise to the citizens whom they serve and to help provide a sense of purpose and faith in the future. We pray for the speaker, for the cabinet and for all those who serve as councillors in this administration, for all those who are here because they love this town and its people. In the deliberations and decisions of this council throughout the coming years, Teach each one to be salt of the earth, fit for use in their calling. This we ask in God's name. Amen. We all may be seated. Election of May 2019-2020. Can I have nominations for the position of mayor, please? Yes. Thank you, Speaker. I would like to propose Steve Reynolds. He is a respected member of the communi community. He's well known in the area. He raises money for various uh, charities. He represented the borough as mayor in a couple of years ago, and he did it with dignity he was always on demand for attention to the different functions which he did enjoy because he is a people's person and I would like to see him mayor for the next 12 months and I propose him for the mayor. Okay, thank you, Emmerich. Okay, if we can have a vote. Oh, sorry, are there any other nominations for mayor? Okay. Okay, can we go for a vote, please? All in favour with hands, please. That's fine. Okay. Councillor Steve Reynolds is elected as our new mayor. Thank you. Can I ask Councillor Steve Reynolds and Councillor Shirley Reynolds to come up, please?
Right, uh, my lords, ladies, Deputy Lieutenant of Shropshire, Lieutenant Colonel Freeman and Freeman of the Borough, High Sheriff of Shropshire, civic leaders, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so proud and it's a great honour to represent the, the, the wonderful borough of Telford and Rekin. My home and for a second term as Mayor. I would like to thank my fellow councillors on all sides for their confidence in me, uh, to be your ambassador for the borough at a time when businesses and industry are thriving in our town and visitor numbers are at record levels. However, the mayoral role is much more than championing the big successes. It is the everyday heroes, the community champions, and the selfless volunteers who deserve the recognition and, great, and their grateful thanks. It's what makes the role of mayor an even greater privilege to be surrounded by the very best of human nature and individuals who care deeply, not only about their home, but their community too. My mayoral charity this year absolutely embodies that spirit of compassion, selflessness and dedication. They have supported and championed young people for 160 years in the borough. This charity is the YMCA, the oldest and largest youth charity in the world. The right start in life and a loving home is the aspiration of any parent for their child. Today, Shirley and I look on with pride at the achievements of my son, Graham, and my daughter, Jilly, who have truly flourished. But I want this opportunity for every child and young person I know, everyone here tonight, and also want this. I look at the work of the YMCA, its compassionate volunteers and highly skilled professionals who are doing just that. Sometimes it is our responsibility when we can to lend a hand, offer advice and protect someone from crisis. This work centred in Wellington and reaching every borough town, parish and village has been happening for 160 years and what an incredible achievement. I was reminded that every hour a vulnerable person becomes homeless that one in four young people are affected by mental health illnesses. One in five children are exposed to domestic violence and one in 20 are a victim of sexual abuse. Those are statistics we can fight here in this chamber. As a decision makers, councillors, parents and residents, something we can all aspire to change for the better. Locally, the YMCA, in partnership with Thrive, the Holly Project and the Freedom Programme are doing this very work day and night because the young people in our borough absolutely deserve a safe home, a loving family, supportive community and every opportunity to train and get the skills they need to flourish. This year is our opportunity to humanise the statistics, listen to the stories and the challenges our young people face and strive forwards together with the YMCA and its partners. In the spirit of celebrating the successes of those everyday heroes, community champions and selfless volunteers, I will commit every opportunity I have to meet our local charities, societies and groups that do so much for the place we call home. So thank you very much. now call for nominations for the election of Speaker for 2019-20. Uh, Councillor Paul Watling. Arnold is long in the tooth. Uh, 
I can attest to this as he was a county councillor back in the early 1980s when some members here weren't even born. Uh, but I want to state publicly that there's no truth in the rumour that the front bench here are much happier to have Arnold in front of them than behind them with me in the backbench <laughs> union. Uh, Mr Speaker, I nominate Councillor Arnold England. Uh, can I ask for the seconder, uh, Councillor Richard Oughton? Thanks Mr. Thanks, Mr Speaker. It's an absolute pleasure to second Arnold in the role of Speaker. Arnold has been a good friend and has been, and has been a delight to work alongside in the Cabinet. Arnold will bring his own personality to the role, but I'm sure his experience of being on the Magistrates bench will hold him in good stead, although I must remind him there's no custodial sentence to hand down. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask if there are any other nominations for the speaker role? Okay. If, they, if that's the case, uh, can we ask for a vote for to nominate Arnold as speaker of the 2019-20? For right, that is carried. So Arnold, welcome and thank you very much. ask if uh, Arnold would like to give a, a short address. A short one. <laughs> it's a great honour. Um, what I really want to say is my thanks to the outgoing speaker, to the outgoing mayor, and this good lady. But I also want to thank those members who have served this council. Oh. Now, Is this on? I'll try that one. I've been sabotaged. <laughs> right. How's, oh, that sounds good. Yes. Right. I'll go back to thanking the uh, the speaker, Councillor Smith, and the former mayor, Councillor Raj Mehta, and his good lady. But really, what I want to do is to thank all those people who have served this council in the last four years and those who were unable to uh, retain their seats, I give them best wishes and I list, wish to welcome all the new councillors and of course those who've been returned. Uh, I hope they find it um, interesting, enjoyable and worthwhile. Um, my role of speaker is to be fair and neutral, but then that's my second name as you all know. and. Uh, so I will endeavour to do my best, and, I have, and I'm well supported and guided by the gentleman on my left. So, shall we carry on? Thank you. Uh, right, I now call for nominations for Deputy Speaker. Um, I believe Councillor Liz Clare is going to move. Deputy Speaker. And again, Donington is throwing its best into the ring and playing a full part in this uh, new council. And uh, it is with great pleasure that I nominate Jim. Right, thank you. Is there a seconder? Formally seconded. Right. Are there any other proposals? Nominations? No? In that case, then, we move to a vote. All those in favour? All right, then, I announce that uh, Councillor Jim Lavery is Deputy Speaker. All right, we now move on to election of Deputy Mayor for 2019-20. Can I ask for nominations, please? Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, 
Before I nominate, I want you to excuse my granddaughter crying in there because she, she was wondering why hasn't a granddad made any speech so far. So she, you got to excuse my granddaughter. Even they, all right. um, it's my great honor and a privilege to nominate Amrik Jabbar uh, to be uh, the deputy mayor for this year. He, I know Amrik very well because he's my brother-in-law. <laughs> And uh, he's very community-minded, and he's, uh, this is his second uh, uh, term on it. He, he was a councillor before, and then he came back. And he's a very diligent uh, councillor. He's always out and about, and he will make a great, great uh, deputy mayor. So I name Amrik Jawar uh, for the deputy mayor. Can I ask for a seconder, please? Councillor Kalia. Mr. Speaker, I would like to second Amrik Jawar for the um, role of deputy Deputy Mayor. Um, Amrik has been a great help to me over the, the last few months. Um, he's such a hard working uh, man and I um, feel his dedication to the role would be a real, a real um, benefit to the people of Telford. So I, I would uh, take pleasure in um, seconding Amrik um, as he will serve the role with great pride. Right, thank you. Are there any other nominations for the role of Deputy Mayor? No, in that case then we move to the vote. All those in favour, please show. Thank you. Then uh, we invite um, Councillor Amrik Jawar to come forward. Right, I'd like to call upon the leader, Sean Davis, to move a vote of thanks to Councillor Rajmata. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, it's my delight to move the uh, vote of thanks for the outgoing Mayor, Councillor Raj Mehta. Um, his year was about bringing communities together, and I think at a time of great division right across the country, but also right across the world, um, that was a, a noble aim to do. And I think over the last 12 months during our 50th uh, year as a new town, he's done just that. He's used his personality, his passion for the community, um, and his genuine interest in the community uh, in that role. He's interested in what the community is doing, and he's interested, uh, interested in how he can help the uh, community uh, thrive. And I know that he's done around 420 engagements over the last uh, year, most of which well, naturally, all of which have resulted in a Twitter or a Facebook post, uh, and more often than not, casework for me or the Cabinet. What is easy to say about Raj and his wife, Poona, is that they care, they love, and they want to be involved in the community. And there's no real surprise about that, given the role that they both play within the National Health Service uh, locally. But it, I've, uh, one of the things I was really delighted that Raj did was he broke from tradition a little bit in the, his mayoral year. Rather than having a charity um, to raise money for, which is, of course is always um, a, uh, a, the right thing to do, but this year he did things slightly different. Understanding that sometimes a small amount of money can make a fantastic difference to the community and raising money uh, for community groups. Sometimes two or three hundred pounds for a community group 
can make all the difference. I know that Raj uh, went around uh, Telfan Rikin um, from the, southern, from the, uh, the uh, Iron Bridge Gorge all the way up to the northern points of the borough and everywhere in between. Um, and I know that um, he's been very proud of his uh, building uh, Bridges logo. Um, and uh, he's, he asked me when he uh, was, he was um, retiring uh, for, uh, uh, as mayor what he will do with that logo. And I'm, just like to um, hand over to you, Raj, uh, the uh, official copyright for that logo so that you can use it in any way that you feel uh, uh, that you uh, wish to do so. Um, Horsey, Lightmore and Lawley are looking forward to having Raj back but I do hope that he'll use some of his passion um, and his dedication in, for communities as his new uh, role in the cabinet for cabinet members for, uh, cabinet member for communities. Thank you. Uh, call upon Councillor Richard Overton to second. Thank you Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure to second the vote of thanks. Um, as Shauna says, Raj has been an excellent ambassador for this town. His Building Bridges theme has helped bring community groups and communities together. And he has kept himself very busy and has been very hard to keep up with, uh, as Sean said with, on Twitter and Facebook. Um, visit after visit, event after event, Raj must have broke a record for the number of he has attended. His enthusiasm and dedication to promoting this borough in its 50th year has shone through, a bit like his smile. So Raj, thank you for all your hard work. You've clearly inspired a lot of people and your intergenerational work has been amazing, involving schools and care homes. I can see your enthusiasm will inspire you even further in your new community's role in the Cabinet and I look forward to working with you. <coughs> Councillor Coldip, Sir Hota. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, it's really been an amazing 12 months. Uh, uh, I was in India last November doing some other work and uh, somebody came to me, this is what happened in the uh, international uh, social media and uh, he said, oh you're from England, I said yeah, I said, uh, Raj Mehta, do you know him, he's the mayor of England, I said well I think I might know him just a little bit, so that's the, you know, the, that's the international uh, social media, it's really, he really put his heart and soul into uh, his job last. He and his Poonam really, really worked their socks off. He visited every school, every community, every church, every mosque, every Gurdwara, every temple, and, and all, you name it, he was there. And uh, meeting people from all communities, and uh, young and not so young as well. Actually, when I was sort of looking through his list, there was a, perhaps he can uh, confirm it, there is a one place he did not visit and which uh, uh, Malcolm Smith visited some years ago. He had the courage to visit this and that is our very own naturalist uh, uh, site. Uh, and that is the only place where he didn't visit and our uh, good old uh, you know, uh, Malcolm, he did visit it. This was a time when, uh, you know, when uh, the, you know, there was a time when there was a problem in keeping track of what he was doing all the time on his, uh, on his social media. There was so much going on, I wasn't quite sure whether it was from yesterday or the day before or the, the week before. He truly built bridges throughout our wonderful, multicultural, colorful, diverse communities of Telfan Rican and well done to Raj and his wife, Poonam. Thank you very much. Councillor Peter Scott. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, as we know, Raj has done an awful lot over the last 12 months. He probably went to bed in that chain. Over 450 engagements is incredible. But one side of Raj I'd like to just point out. When I was ill this year, Raj rang me four times just to say, how are you? Do you need anything? That I appreciated. Thank you, Raj. I wish you all the best. Does anybody else wish to comment? Yes. Mr. Tomlinson? Yeah. I, um, I have to say, I've never met a more hard-working mayor, possibly Steve is even 
harder than yourself, maybe, but you never know this year. But it, it's been brilliant, the most hard working man I've seen so far. And his, his efforts to make uh, community cohesion has been wonderful. So thank you very much, Raj. It's really appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Veronica Fletcher. We're very proud of in our ward. And thank you as well for your charity launch. We enjoyed that as well. So thank you both. Thank you. I, uh, I echo those comments and I now put the proposition to the vote. All those in favour? Ms. Carrie, thank you. See yeah, so I'm being coached. Right. Well, the Mayor, to make a presentation to Councillor Raj Mehta and Dr. Poonin Mehta. Yeah. Thank you. Would Councillor Mehta like to reply to the vote of thanks? <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, civic dignitaries, thank you all for joining us for the annual council meeting this evening. Thank you, members, for your kind words of thanks towards my term in office. Twelve months ago, I was lucky enough to be appointed the mayor. This was a special occasion for me. And I promised myself to put 100% effort in and also do all the things slightly different. I focused on community and voluntary groups, working to support the multi-faith community and celebrating diversity within the borough of Telford I wanted to bring everyone closer together as collectively we made Telford and Rican what it is today. I managed to attend over 426 engagements. My goodness, that averages out to be more than one per day. Even I feel surprised. I remember attended opening ceremonies of new businesses such as Aldi and B&M stores. I attended charity functions and seeing firsthand the talent our young people have shown through showcases and dance performances. A big highlight was taking part in the town's 50th birthday celebrations throughout 2018. Additionally, I'm truly thankful that this time in the office has given me the opportunity to give something back to the wider community. I spent some of my time visiting our borough schools, meeting with our young people, and spending time learning about their future endeavours as our community's next generation. I'm a firm believer that it is our children who secure our future. At the same time, it's just an important to respect and remember our elderly generation, so I spent an equal amount of time in residential care homes, taking the much needed time to meet our older generation, a generation which fought hard for our country and helped build our town, a generation which is truly deserved their earned appreciation. It's been remarkable visiting many of the communities and voluntary groups and organisations throughout the year, including Pink Ribbons Breast Cancer Support Group, Tavarican Parkinson's Support Group, 
and the Children's Society, to name a few. The amazing work they do has allowed me to see what a wonderful impact they have within the borough and how greatly they need our support. We have so much great community who work so hard with so much effort in and also go above and beyond and therefore I decided to make arrangements particularly for individuals to receive Mayor's Recognition Certificates. A personal touch to someone an honour for me to present. This small effort for individuals could be the pride and privilege on a personal level and inspirational to their family and friends. I'm aware that I'm not have got around to everyone for those who I did not get around to meeting I'd like you to know that your efforts are highly appreciated keep up the good work and positive spirit <coughs> Excuse me. Christmas in particular was an important time of the year especially as it was very clear to see that not everyone in the borough is able to celebrate the festival surrounded by loved ones so I decided to pop over to the PRH hospital on Christmas Eve to visit the children in the wards as I felt it was important to wish these young individuals a happy Christmas and to give them an opportunity to meet Santa. Rather than supporting a particular charity it was decided to launch a grant fund scheme where grants of up to £500 would be available for the benefit of a local voluntary organisations undertaking charitable activities. Since the beginning of the middle term, the fund has grown with donations from fundraising events, including my Bollywood Meets Hollywood charity ball, and has been able to provide support to a wide range of charitable activities and projects with the prime focus on social needs and disadvantages to deprived. In total, I have raised over 10,500 this year. I couldn't have done this without your support. In particular, the fund has assisted small local vol voluntary organisations who are undertaking valuable work in the community, but do not have the required resources for seeking such funds. The theme of building bridges was incorporated in the scheme, providing funds to support those voluntary and community groups working to promote diversity in particular within our town. It's been a pleasure to serve this town as mayor and I've always loved Telford, so when this opportunity came up, I accepted the huge honour and privilege of serving Mayor, the first citizen of the borough. I, wish I will miss working in the Mayor's office, but sadly my time has come to an end. And as I begin a new role and a journey in the Cabinet, I would like to take the opportunity to thank staff at Telford and Weekend Council for their continued support in managing my diary and civic charity events this year. I'd like to thank you, my Deputy Councillor Steve Reynolds, for your support this year and wish you all the best for your year in office and Shirley, your, your year in office of Meras. I'd like to thank my mother, my two children who haven't seen much of me this year and equally like to thank the Meras, my wife, Purnam, for her devoted support and love of the last 12 months. As a token of appreciation, I'd like to ask my wife, Hunam, to come up to the front so that she can be presented um, with a thank you gift. I'd like to thank all of the people in Telford for their love and respect and would like to ask that they continue to give their appreciation to our new mayor going forward, Amiras. I will not forget the individuals in our community who have had the pleasure and enjoyment of meeting and working with this year. I will endeavour to continue my Building Bridges project following my term in office and will be working closely with our community to further unite individuals and celebrate what Telford has to offer. Finally, I want you all to know that I will always be available to all of you. I was 
to hand prior to becoming mayor during my term as the mayor and I will remain available to you should you ever need any help or support as this is something that is in my character and as well as in my heart and not just in the title I have been given. One thing's for sure, our town is one that we should all be proud of and call home. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Mehta. Right, I now proceed with the election of leader and I ask for nominations. Councillor Richard Overton. Thank you again, Mr Speaker. I would like to move Councillor Sean Davis as leader of this authority. Sean has shown in the last three years he is indeed a wise head on young shoulders. His enthusiasm and dynamic leadership has helped this authority through some difficult times as it bears the burden of government austerity. Sean has been at the forefront of new ideas and of standing up and giving a voice for Telford and Reakin, like in the fight to retain hospital services at our Princess Royal Hospital. Sean is keen to put Telford and Reakin, a town he was born and brought up in, on the map, talking the town up, not down like some. His passion, dedication and commitment to the world is clear for us all to see. It's been an absolute pleasure to work alongside him. As we all know, Sean has helped lead our local party to its great election success on May the 2nd on the basis of protecting, caring and investing in this beautiful borough and its residents. Thank you. Seconder for the proposal, Councillor Hilda Rhodes. Thank you, Speaker. I'm very happy to second the nominations for Sean Davies, who has done an excellent job facing all the challenges we've had over the last few years. He's always thinking and caring for the community and Telford in which he loves very much. He's dear to his heart, and I propose his second. Thank you. Are there any other nominations for position of leader? Are you sure? Then uh, I put it to the vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. I now declare that Councillor Sean Davis is leader of the Borough Council. Right, now time for the appointment of deputy leader, and I note that under the strong leader arrangements, the leader must appoint a deputy leader. Additional cabinet posts will be appointed under item 15 of the agenda. So I confirm that the leader will appoint Councillor Richard Overton as deputy leader for a four-year term of office. Therefore, Councillor Richard Overton is appointed deputy leader. Thank you. Right. Apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies? Oh, yes, I do recall she's been injured. And I, I wish her well and a speedy return. Thank you. Are there any declarations of interest? None at all? Okay. These are, of course, in relation to minutes on the agenda only. Uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, Confirm the minutes of the previous meeting. Sean has proposed. Richard Overton has seconded. All agreed? Right, thank you. Right, I would like to invite the leader, Sean Davis, to address the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and congratulations on your election as Speaker. I'm sure we're going to have some fun over the next uh, 12 months or so. Um, and I'd also like to congratulate all the members present, um, those who have been elected for the first time and those who have been re-elected for um, a, um, a, a, um, another time. It's clear though, looking around the chamber, that this council has been refocused and refreshed. Our communities have spoken. They've overwhelmingly placed their trust in me and my group to deliver policies to invest, protect and care for Telford Rican, the place that we call home. They've chosen to hope rather than to fear. Positivity instead of negativity. 
They've endorsed a party who focus on finding solutions to problems rather than a party who finds problems with every solution. They saw merit in a campaign forced on facts and rejected a campaign based on myth, distortion, denial, or sometimes just making things, um, things up. They have voted to believe in self and Rikin, like we do. Our communities delivered a clear message, not only to us, but to others too. To a police and crime commissioner who has hiked council tax up in South Norikian without providing a single additional police officer in this borough. To an elite in Shropshire who still, to this day, conspire to merge this council with Shropshire Council. And to a government that has sat on its hands while our hospital and our NHS is under attack who continue to cut funding for vital safeguarding and other services at a rate of £500 per hour, and who continue to try and convince a public that the reasons for every ill in a community is because of the local town hall instead of Whitehall. Our central headline pledges are clear. To fight against any plans to downgrade our A&E and close our women and children's unit and this decision is still, still with the Health Secretary. Keeping council tax amongst the lowest in the region. Despite government cuts, continue to invest in our services for the vulnerable adults and children of our borough. To invest records amounts of money to upgrade our, foot, our roads, our footpaths and our infrastructure. And to fight against a Shropshire Council takeover. The Labour Group is at its largest since 1997. The main opposition party at its smallest since 2003. A Liberal Democrat and Independent Group stronger than before. But this isn't about division. We instead embrace co-action, collaboration and cooperation. And indeed, over the last eight years, each of our budgets have been crafted with a view to answer tough challenges presented due to government's cuts, but with an attempt to win broad support across this council. And we will continue in that approach. We will deliver our manifesto commitments, over 100 pledges, but in doing so, we will work with the smaller parties. There are no boundaries to our mission to protect, invest and care for the borough that we are proud to call home. And I hope that this powerful, simple, but sincere mission will encourage others to join us in that cause. The time for old politics is over. It should never be about personnel, but will always, without exception, be about the people. The time for opposition for opposition's sake should end. Destructive, dirty, underhanded uh, 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 tactics are the tactics of yesterday. Healthy debate, constructive dialogue, championing of shared causes are the way of today and the future. Our communities expect us to serve and we will serve. They have asked for hard work all year round and we will work hard all year round. They have asked their representatives um, to continue in their determination and we will. They have asked that their elected representatives work together to solve the issues and to capitalise on the opportunities of the day. And 36, 36 Labour councillors are ready to do this. Let's make that 54. 54 Telford and Reekin councillors eager to serve and determined to do all we can to invest, protect and care for our, um, our, our borough, the place that we call home leaving party politics at the door. Together, let's send a message to a government. Telford and Rekin deserves better. We want better. We can deliver better, but we need better from you. And to our residents, we will strive to always be better. Today, to be better than today than we were yesterday. For everyone, regardless of your age, background, faith, gender, or where you live in the borough, we will always strive to be better. In fact, not just better, but the best. Mr Speaker, there is much work to do. Together, let's get to work.
to call upon the Leader of the Opposition, Councillor Reid. Right, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mayor, and of course, the Leader of the Council, can I uh, be the first to congratulate you on your uh, appointment as well? Um, I bet no one here can really believe just how much my colleagues and I are looking forward to this meeting tonight. We really have been ticking off the days, hours and minutes to actually be here. And I think the weather outside actually compounds that determination we have uh, to come and uh, uh, attend the, the AGM itself. Having given up the best part of the year campaigning only to watch the uh, fruits of our labour, if you'll forgive the pun, literally fall off the edge of a cliff at the end of March. To say that we are disappointed is probably an understatement, but such is life. And in many respects we are where we are. I also suspect that uh, there aren't too many here who found themselves uh, welcoming the issue of Brexit with open, open arms. And uh, the issue of Brexit certainly has uh, proved um, a double-edged sword in many respects. Still, as I say, we are where we are, and I won't say we're not disappointed with the way that the election panned out, because we are very disappointed. Uh, like all parties and all candidates, we put in a tremendous amount of work to try and put our policies forward. But as I say, um, other issues certainly intervened. One or two, uh, and there was a reference there to 2004 when we were at our lowest. Actually, that's uh, not, not quite true. Uh, one or two may remember that I've witnessed such a meltdown before, uh, but then 24 years ago we ended up with a group of three Conservative councillors on this authority and not 13. Although I have to say at the time it made group meetings very easy, uh, although it was worrying when we couldn't get a, a, a majority on one particular issue with only three of us. And while still looking at the past along with a few others, I remember my first AGM here which was in 1983, when the then outgoing mayor, he was a Labour councillor, I remember him uh, from my time as an apprentice at uh, Sankey's in Hadley, his councillor, Ken Corbett, and he made this point that we'd all worked hard to get elected and we were all here collectively to represent the borough as a whole to the best of our ability. Now I can sit there now and I can see him saying it, made quite quite an impression on me. And lately it seems to me that these thoughtful words have fallen on stony ground. But I earnestly hope, having listened to what uh, Councillor Davis has said, that newly elected and some returning councillors that we have will bring about a fresh start and an end to the politics of the playground. I believe that the very low turnout of this election must not happen again, and that collectively we must do all that we can to bring about a greater engagement in local politics and local government by working together for the good of the borough. That is not to say that as an opposition group we will not oppose whenever we think the policy is wrong or the council has acted badly or the council has acted in poor faith. However, neither does it mean that we will not support appropriate policies which benefit the community as a whole. And an issue has been made around the A&E, the PRH, and the Women and Children's Unit, of which we've been extremely and absolutely and utterly supportive. They say that a week is a long time in politics, and in these volatile times, these words were never more true. However, I've always thought that the Council's AGM should be purely a civic and mayor-making occasion, and politics really at this meeting should be pushed to one side, although that probably makes for a, a duller meeting in some respects. This is a time, I believe, to pay tribute to long-serving councillors who, after attack of common sense, have decided to retire, and also councillors who've served their community but failed to get re-elected. So I, for one, am looking forward to the next four years, which I believe will start to see a fundamental change in political landscapes and political fortunes right across the board. Let us hope the Telford and Reekin Council rises to challenges as they present themselves and that collectively we can all work together 
to build a much better borough. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Councillor Reid, and I do appreciate the paranomasia that you used. Uh, Councillor Tomlinson. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm mindful of the fact this is our first meeting since the election. I'm also mindful of the, the fact that today are the European elections. Now, I'm conscious that these two events symbolise something to me, and they point this way. Our election uh, was the end of a, a political battle for Telford and Reekin. Today, I believe, starts the political battle for the hearts and minds of the people of Britain. We are now entering into the Battle of Britain. I've got my Spitfire cufflinks, so I only just wanted to show you those. Coming back to the battle for Telford and Reeking, the political battle has finished and the council is now set for four years, but the battle for Telford and Reeking hasn't finished. It goes on and goes on and goes on. We are battling against, primarily in my mind, government cuts. These cuts are making a huge impact on people's lives and will get even worse. At the last, very last council meeting, I put forward a motion which all councillors are really pleased supported. And in that unity, we all said we would not support any more cuts to this local authority. To that point, we all agreed and we asked our uh, MPs to go forward and carry that forward so that they would not vote for another local government finance bill if it meant we as Telford and Reekin ended up with less money. I'm an accountant and I can't help that. It's the way I think, it's the way I am. And money can be really important. The government have said that it's actually put more money into adult social services. Well, there's always a partial truth to this, it has. It has given more money, allegedly, in, in the money we get for adult social services and allowed us to raise our council taxes extremely high. But in the next hand, it's taken money away. We are looking in the next four years, if plans carry on as they are, and I hope to God, I really do pray for this, they will change, we've got to make savings of £30 million. £30 million is equal to the entire budget for children's social services. It cannot happen. It simply cannot happen. So I pledge my group's entire support with every effort that this local authority can make to petition governments, to petition anybody to stop these cuts coming through. If that wasn't enough, we have another battle which I pledge my group's support for, and that's for hospital services in our borough, in fact, in our county. We can't just be parochial and think the matter resolves simply around the Princess Royal. It doesn't. And I mentioned in my first part that this political battle wasn't simply the battle for Telford and Reeking. This is the battle for Britain. We're up against it on every local authority, every health authority, every police authority. We have rising crime. We have rising queues at a and &E. we have people who can't get operations. We live in a civilised society. This should not be happening. My other concern, and I, I want to make a personal note here, some of you out there may have noticed by my accent that I'm a foreigner, originated from Birmingham, or technically Warsaw, and my only links to, to the lovely Shropshire is I had a relative that lived as a Christian in the lovely name of Paradise in Colebrookdale. I had an Uncle Derek there. I also have relatives that um, lives in St George's, which is brilliant. And my dad, through the war, uh, when he was called up, he trained at Iarkle as an aircraft fitter uh, in the fleet air on. Those are my tenuous links with Shropshire. But I do remember, as a foreigner, coming into Telford 30 years ago, in, in Rockford Iron Village, and people took me on. Now, I knew I wasn't a resident, <laughs> I knew I wasn't a Shropshire lad, but they were warm and heartfelt warmth, and, and I was taken on as anybody else. And I've seen that across the whole of the borough.
people welcome people in. However, governments can conspire against this. When you get population movements that increase either people from Britain to another place or from another country to another place, and that funding doesn't follow the people, tensions rise. And they rise because there aren't enough school places, there aren't enough doctors, there aren't enough this, there aren't enough that. Can't blame it all on government statisticians. Those population increases cause tensions. And funding cuts cause even more tensions. With the European elections, so much has been said about foreign people. I want to cast your minds back to before the Battle of Britain in the 1930s, where those same tensions, because of austerity then in the 1930s, on a scale that we could never imagine, we didn't want refugees coming in from Germany. What would we have felt about ourselves now hadn't we not let those Jews come into our country from other places or other refugees? I am mindful of the fact that it's the hard-working people of this country that have to suffer the cuts. And sometimes when suffering cuts, people will look to others to blame as to why those cuts have affected them. That crime is on the government and ineptitude of people that haven't reacted to that. And I can give my full support that I would like our society to remain open and welcoming. You can't have unlimited immigration. Neither in Telford and Reiki nor the rest of the country. But people should be welcomed. It's the governments that have created this tension, not people. And I do apologise for going over Arnold. Advise that we are still in Perda on the European election, so any reference to that is out of order. Well, I'm glad you've advised me of that. I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't been told. Are, are you winding up now? Um, yes, my wife will wind me up fairly soon. Good, good man. Can you scratch all that from your memories, please, what I've just said? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All right, uh, Council Leader, do you wish to comment? No? Right, thank you. Um, appointment to Cabinet. Right, the appointment of Cabinet next. I call upon the Leader, Councillor Sean Davis, to notify the appointments of his Cabinet as per the schedule for this item, and this will be endorsed by Councillor Richard Overt. Uh, formally proposed, formally endorsed. We put it to vote? No, it's his gift. Right, thank you. Um, delegation scheme. Call upon the Deputy Leader and Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood Services Enforcement and the Pride Programme to reassert the Council's yeah. delegation scheme in accordance say. with the Constitution. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Speaker. You've just nicked what I was going to say. Um, I'd like to reassert the Council's delegation scheme in accordance with the Constitution. Oh. Well said. Right. Uh, leader, would you like to... Right, formally seconded. Put it to the vote. All those in favour? All right, that's carried. Thank you. All right, appointment to committee and boards for, and members' allowances. Councillor Sean Davis. If I can refer members to the uh, schedule item 18, the report contained uh, therein, um, I'd like to, on block, propose uh, the committee structure together with the uh, launch of the independent remuneration panel review. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Richard Overton, formally seconded. Put it to the vote. All those in favour? Carried, thank you. Um, the schedule for ordinary meetings of the Council, is that agreed and noted? Well, is that noted? Thank you. Closure of the AGM. Um, I declare the meeting closed and invite all members and guests to stay after the meeting for refreshments, which will be served from the rear of the theatre. So if everyone could remain seated whilst the civic party retire, and uh, then the top table will leave. Thank you.